It popped in my head today and I kind of got confused. And I went back to my catalog of videos and I looked at them and I'm like, what? Like I haven't done a deep diving crankbait yet. That's almost more standard than your typical square bill crankbait of just a deep diver. I haven't done a deep diving crankbait. I've made them before, I just, something like that. I've never made for a YouTube video. Aren't you surprised? Well, surprise, one day, I have the perfect spot too for this bait. That spot where I caught the pike with the seven inch bluegill swim bait. It's deep right there. And the pike are down there. And this, I'm gonna send that down there. And we're gonna hook up to some decent pike today. This bait is no slouch either. It's gonna be made out of an inch thick piece of poplar. Three inches long, one inch thick, beefy bait. Conventional, yes. Size isn't anything out of proportion when it comes to what you could get from the store, but beefy bait still usually they're not an inch thick ah yeah maybe it won't be an inch thick it'll be close close enough i mean there's gonna have to be a pretty severe taper towards the tail and a little bit towards the head so i don't know we'll see Okay, I also need to cut out the lip and I'm gonna do that right now because I got it stenciled up and everything. And I'm using a thin Lexan. Usually, I use like an eighth inch or even a quarter inch, but this is a sixteenth of an inch because I have a bunch of this stuff and I need to use it. Look at that. Look at that time. 10.45. You know, being the early rising responsible parent that I am, it's just so much better to get up early and just get things done like this, you know? I see that now. Yeah, that's a pretty severe taper right there, but I don't know, in my experience, you do get quite the wobble though if you have a big taper like that. I think it kind of has diminishing returns though. You don't want to go too far with it and just have like a big circle bait, like a big round, I'm just saying, you don't want to go too far with it. As with anything in life. And there's the head up there. That's going to look good. That's going to have a lot of shape to it. Let's get you guys centered. You're not going to want to miss this. Nice, interesting shape. You know, I'm not just taken over by it, but I'm interested. Ho, 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 hey. Ooh. Whoopsie. Poplar is just the best. It is so nice to carve. If butter was a wood, it would be poplar. I know there's stuff like Tupelo and special carving woods and stuff, but we don't get that fancy here. And that means poplar is the butter of wood or the wood of butter, butter of wood. Yeah, when you're carving and you have an angle that slopes down this way and this way and you got your grain straight, you need to flip it around and carve the other way. I'm so used to doing that. I, I don't think I've ever said that in a lure making video though. Like watch your wood grain because it's super easy to tear out on a fishing lure. Just like that. I just did that, but it was just a tiny little bite, but that's, that's tear out. See how it's all scrappy right there and the other cuts are smooth because some wood grain pulled out with that cut. And you can have that, but super severe and just like rip a giant chunk out of your bait and you can glue it back or restart. Either way, that's not very fun. If you got a really sharp tool, you can go against the grain a little bit and slide it like that. Like all of that was against the grain and get away with a cut like that. But you need some sharp tools. Work sharp. And then you got a slope in curve like this. Get a sharp wood carving knife. It's way better than trying to do that with a chisel because you can, as you cut, turn it and really follow the line. You see? This is just a tip filled video. So uh, Nate Marling at hotmail.com, you can PayPal me. Thank you. Kind of looks like the one on my shirt. 
This one's way more fat though. And I mean that in a shameful way. Dang. If you always get about this far into a build like this and you wish that you made a copy of the template for this bait because if this is a very well working bait, I'm gonna want to have made more. It's probably worth putting the templates as like a PDF too that you can get online on my website or something. I need to consider that once in a while, you know. Pretty important step coming up right here. We need to drill a couple of holes in the correct locations on this lip. It's gotta be smack your grandma dab in the middle of this lip. Those two uh, marks are what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah, if you look at, yeah, that's centered. Sometimes your eyes really wanna play tricks on you when you look at stuff like this, like a transparent piece of something that you need to see if it's something centered in it. And it like it's throwing me this way, like, oh, they're too much. And then I think, oh, it's that way. Too much this way. You know what I mean? No. So we're still on this lip. There's another thing to do. I have to install the wire inside of this lip before it goes into the bait. So you just bend a piece of wire like this, put the two ends through the two corresponding holes. Eh? See? And then find your snippers. Snip. Put your line tie, this end, in the vise. You wanna put it in the vise the same distance that you want it sticking out of the lip when, in, when the bait's finished. You wanna clamp all of that in the vise, tightly. You don't want it slipping. Chuck the other end up in your drill and twist. Don't twist too much. You'll crack your lip. Oh. Don't take the lip out of the vise. Step five or whatever we're on. Don't take the lip out of the vise. I need something long and pokey. Open this. I just drill it. Oh, you gotta open a new one. Anyway, just bend the wire down. And that is the line tie installed in the lip. Get to snip it off still. I usually don't snip it off much further than the length of the lip, something like that. And you can, you know, use your imagination, see how that's gonna fit in the bait. I have to drill a hole under the lip slot, but there you go. That's how that works. Back at the drill press, half inch bit. What we need to do now, wow, that is so in the middle, is drill a hole that we're going to put lead in and it's just going to be enough lead to get this bait to float on top and set up right. Deep divers like this, sure, if they're heavier, they dive deeper. Um, but if you, if you use that too much to your advantage, you're not gonna have a good balance and a uh, buoyancy differentia differentiation inside the bait where the belly's heavy and the top's buoyant. And because you have so much of a on these things, um, you're gonna want a lot of stabilization in the body. You don't just wanna make it really heavy. You want even, you want as much buoyancy on top and weight in the belly as possible, so you want it to float too. Maybe, maybe a lot of weight is good. Never mind. cut all that out. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I'm just gonna drill a hole in the belly and pour some lead in it. So I did something. I drilled a hole in that lead hole because that lead hole is exactly where I want this front hook hanger to be. And I glued this, uh, a big screw eye just like that. Glued and screwed that right in the middle. And I'm gonna pour lead around that. So that's really gonna be in there. And that is how you want things to be in lures is really in there. Watch this. Maybe sometime today it'll focus and I can show you what I'm talking about. One sec. Hook hangers. So here's a hole you want centered. It's the hole that the line tie wire is gonna go in. So I just marked it out. You want it perpendicular. Sorry, you want it parallel. Don't make this hole perpendicular. You want it parallel with the lip. Yeah, it's good to check your angle. Keep changing it 90 degrees to check your angle. Ow, ouch. I got a boo-boo. Wow, that's perfectly centered right there. Too bad I don't have glue on this already. But that's how that works. And that is a super, oh, I scratched my bait right there with the pliers, but that's a super secure connection when you get this wire glued in and the lip slot all glued up. That's how most people do it, I think. People who make the deep divers and have line ties on the lip. That's how I've always done it. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Lid's hot. Fix my lead pot, by the way. It pours really well now. That worked out good. Hook hanger encased in lead.
And yes, this is the correct way to use a feeler gauge. So I'll leave that in the vise, and I'm gonna just file this down. Okay, we are moving. I'm gonna seal this bait already. Haven't drilled the eye sockets, have not installed the lip, but I think it's a good time. I'm not even showing this. Oh no, you guys won't know how to do it. Oops, don't drop it. Bad technique on my part there. Don't drop your bait. Sealed. Trying to get all the super glue out of that lip slot with a micro file here. It was a super tight fit before, but when you add that super glue, it makes it so the wood doesn't have any give at all. Now it's pretty difficult to get in there, but we'll get it just like that. Boom. Now for this bait, we're not just gonna super glue this lip in. We're gonna get the old epoxy out. Remember those days when that's like all I used was epoxy to glue stuff, fill holes. Those were the old days. Enough reminiscing. Mix some up real quick here. Forgot to hit record, I'm sorry. I just got glue everywhere um, on purpose and stuck the lip in. You get the picture, right? Apply the glue, put the lip where it belongs. And now, using five minute, you have time to make sure this is straight. That's the only reason I'm using the five minute. With super glue, you have to stick it in the correct spot the first time and not move it. And, but with this, you can move it and get it right and make triple sure you got it right. And there it is, we have it right. That's as straight as you get. No home, I shouldn't make that joke, this is YouTube. Beautiful. Got those eye sockets drilled. I'm just gonna cover these eye sockets in a little bit of super glue and we're painting. A little bit of sanding too, I guess. Make sure this is smooth before we paint. I haven't given it a single thought on what I want this to be. What am I gonna paint this? I'm gonna tape off the lip and give it a thought. What do pike like? There's a lot of shad in that river, in that spot. You see them being chased by pike all the time. A bright, I would need to go with bright because that river's dirty. Let's go with a really bright shad. Shad. Starting with white. This is going to be one of those baits where I give it paint on the base and then clear coat it and then do all the detail paint after the first clear coat and then clear coat it again. So it's going to have two clear coats and it looks way better that way in my opinion. The paint ends up looking way better. What we're going to do for this shad I think is like that blue and chartreuse. What's it? Sexy shad? We could do a sexy shad. Something like that. Maybe not exactly like that but whatever. Paint something good, right? Put some bluish gold up top. Bluish gold, that's the color. Pretty distinct chartreuse line right down the middle. Then I just added some pink details towards the nose and then towards the back here. A little bit of scales will go over that and make that look kind of fleshy and fishy, I guess. Last thing I did was add some black around the eye socket and the top. Now it's gonna get a clear coat and then we're gonna paint the details. This one's not gonna drip for very long either. Keeping it thick, as we do on this channel. Turning the lights on first and then I'm just gonna use my hand and put this in the tank when I want it to go, when I want everything to set, you know. You can kind of see how thick the clear coat is right there. You kind of want that to thin out a little bit so you don't like break a big chunk off of the bait when you're cleaning that off. It's good now. Just in that short amount of time, like it's already set, like you can't bend that wire, the clear coat's set. It's exactly how I want it though, that went well. So now we have a beautifully smooth surface to paint on. Let's make this look good. All meshed up, it's time to paint some scales. We're going with pearls. Pearl white, it's a shad. We're gonna do pearl white towards the sides and the belly, and then up on the shoulders, gold. Time for the reveal. Get some better light for you guys, because it's shiny. Gorgeous pearlized scales. Gonna outline the two gill plates with the black. Yeah, it'd look better that way, right? Yeah. That's pretty interesting gill pattern. I like that. You know what? I'm gonna do a shad dot right now. 
Perfect. I never breathe when I do that. I'm always out of breath. So I already did a little bit of pearl white over the white that I already sprayed. Now I'm gonna come back in with some of that bluish gold. And I think after I glue the eye onto that, this bait is finished. Cause that looks good. That looks really good. A little bit of flesh tone on the belly, chartreuse stripe down the middle. Beautiful. That is going to bring some pike up from the depths. Already got another clear coat on it. It's in the tank. Gorgeous bait. I'm getting a little excited. That really turned out perfectly. Deep diver. We'll see how deep this goes. Let's get some hooks on it though. Getting low on hooks. I'm having to take them off of other baits. You guys remember this one? The real gold swim bait. Exactly 1.5 ounces in a three inch bait. That's an inch wide. It's a thing of beauty. Let's go see how it works. Well, here we are my super secret pike spot that everybody seems to know about. We're gonna get nice and set up down here and we're gonna catch some pike. You just watch. Thumbnail for the ages right there. Let's do this, fellas and fellettes. I say stupid stuff when I'm excited and I over-exaggerate. Oh, it thumps. We're gonna get a fish first cast right here. That's a negative. Let's try to see how this bait works, even though it's a deep diver. It thumps like crazy. This has got a crazy action. Yeah, you guys aren't gonna be able to see that at all, but I think you can see my line. Oh, you might have been able to see it right there. Like, this thing wants to dive. Trying to show you guys the action on the surface doesn't show what it does in the water. Oh, I got one. That was a big hit. Whoa, this is a big fish. He is peeling drag on this swim bait rod. Oh, this is a big fish. What the heck? This is a big pike. That was my second cast. Okay. We got him. Oh, I don't have a scale or anything. This is a good pike. Woo! Now you guys can't say I don't catch big fish. Well, you can. We can all have our opinions, you know? But this is a big pike. Okay. Let's try to clean this guy off. Get you guys a better shot. I don't know, that's like probably 30 inches. So I guess he's not a huge pike, but probably the biggest fish I've caught on camera so far. Once again, I over exaggerate when I'm excited. Be free, a giant pike. 348. Challenge complete. Oh, jeez. I didn't make that official. I just got way too excited and I did not make that official. I, I really felt like I was forgetting something when I was releasing that pike. All I said, I think, was like B3 or something stupid like that. I have to catch another pike and make it official. B3. <laughs> what the heck? It's the, new, it's the new Marlin Bait's catchphrase. Be free. Oh, shoot. I might have just set that really deep into a log. Oh, this is not good. 65 pound test power pro is very hard to break too. I'm hoping I can just straighten out a hook and rip it out. Nope. Uh, 
That is crazy. I only got one fish, but it was the biggest fish of the year. I think it was like less than 10 casts after that. Snag the lure and like over 10 feet of water on a log that's way down there. Blech. <coughs> so I spent last night making a new bait. I'll show you it in a second. I just wanted to inform you all that I'm really not even that disappointed that I lost that bait. It, it stings every time you do that, but I got that fish and then I lost it. I don't want to say that I'm kind of getting used to it, but losing baits is just, it's getting easier and easier. Let's get to the fishing spot. Going to a sand pit of a pond that's next to a river that there's a lot of fish in and there are pike in it. My friend David, I think he caught some pike out of here just recently, so. Whoa, the water's low. I've never seen it this low. Wow. Here's what I came up with last night. Nothing special at all. I even foiled it with one of those lure tapes. No gills, just black, white, and flash. I made this one out of balsa wood. It's got a, a much tighter, uh, a much tighter, much more consistent action. Works beautifully. Got one. That's a solid hit. It doesn't feel ginormous. What do we got? Bass. We got a bass. Quite the football of a bass, actually. <laughs> He's got three spots on the top of his head. That's a pretty beefy bass for being that length. And it's official. It's not the target species, but it's official. Bass like deep divers. Be free. <laughs> okay, let's get that pike. We're here for the pike. Come on, pike. It's the end of the video, Chip. It's the end of the video. Let's go. Look at that. I just put a clear coat on this yellow bass. What a beauty. Anyway, that was a pretty rough day of fishing. Hours and hours and we got, that was a chunky bass though. Kinda this time of the year, you all know what I mean. There's that transition. I think we're going through it right now. At least for this video, we got that gigantic pike and a chunky bass, so can't complain. I have no clue. Oh, Chip, you hit your head. You okay? I was gonna say, I have no clue what I'm gonna make for the next video before my dog knocked himself out. I just, just no idea. I can't, I'm just completely clueless for what to do for the next video. I don't know. Wait, I just thought of something. Yeah, it's gonna be good. That's, that's a good idea. On to the next bait. I'm never going to finish this thing. I don't know why I keep showing you guys this thing.